God. So since we don't know everything, we have to depend on God and take God at his word. And one of the good examples I can give you is I'm three, I'm three in one. I'm really three in one. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a father, uh-huh, and I'm a husband, uh-huh, and I'm a grandfather. Three persons, just one body. Three different faiths. So I do each faith differently. I have different responsibilities in every area of my life. As a father, I got a responsibility to my children. As a husband, I have a responsibility to my wife. As a, as a pastor, I got a responsibility to the congregation. As a grandfather, I have a responsibility to my grandkids, to pour it to them, and to make sure they understand the word of God. Make sure they understand that you ain't gonna make it without the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And let me show you, let me show you, let me show you a scripture because I like to back up whatever I tell you in scripture. Yes, Go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 4 through 6 and we'll see what it says. God wants, this is important, this, this is important. This is God, the Father's desire. God wants everyone to be saved. Amen. And to fully understand the truth. See, see, there are so many people that are deceived. There are so many people that don't understand. There are so many people just think that life is about just doing whatever you want to do. But life is really about living your life in such a way to please God. Living your life in such a way, making decisions that please God. Having the kind of relationship with God where the Satan can't take advantage of you. Manipulate you through temptation. Manipulate you through things that will draw you away from the kingdom of God. Stay close to God. If you want to be victorious, make sure that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And make sure you have the power of the Holy Spirit operating in your life. Amen. Yes, God. There's only, I told you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yes, God. And the Holy Spirit. Only one God. There's only one God. There's only one way that people can reach God. There's only one way. You do not reach God simply because you come to church. Well, it's a good starting point, but it is not how we reach God. You got to go through Jesus Christ. You do not reach God because you get online. You do not even reach God because you give the church money. You do not reach God because you sing on the choir. I want to praise thing. You don't reach God because you up here preaching and teaching. You got people in all these different areas in the house of God who still is not saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. There's only one way to the Father, and that is through the Son. The Word of God says that, and there is only one way that people can reach God. The way is through Christ Jesus, who is as a man. Let's go to the next verse. Gave himself to pay for everyone to be free. In other words, we were sinners. In other words, sinners are separated from God. And I thank God that Jesus Christ gave himself. That now I'm back in a right relationship with my Heavenly Father. Because I don't know about you, but I made it in my mind a long time ago. I want to be in the right place with God. I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. This is the message that was given to us just at the right time. At the right time from years ago. I went to church. I was a sinner. I had not accepted Jesus. I didn't even go to church. But I went to church one Sunday morning. And I heard the word of God. And I felt the spirit of God say, go down that aisle and give your life to me. Accept me as your Lord and your Savior. And it has changed my life. I'm a different man now. I'm a different husband now. I'm a different father now. I'm a different grandfather now. I'm a different pastor now. Why? Because I got the power of the Holy Spirit. Operating in my life. And I pray to God that you got the power of the Holy Spirit operating in your life. Because the power of the Holy Spirit, he gives you power. Power to overcome stuff. Power to heal your own body. Power to cast out demons. Power to rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. I tell you, if you got the power of the Holy Spirit, you're going to be all right. Oh, you're going to be all right. And in the Old Testament, I don't want nobody to get confused. In the Old Testament, sometimes they refer to the Holy Spirit as the Spirit. 
spirit of God, God's spirit, the spirit of the Lord. And in the New Testament, sometimes they refer to the Holy Spirit as the spirit of Christ. But you better understand, it's still the Holy Spirit. It is the one that gives you power. It's the one that gives you spirit. It's the one that will lift you up. It's the one that will make you open your shades back up. It's the one that will make you get up even when you're going through and start praising God. It's something about that Holy Spirit. It gives you power to overcome any situation in your life. Power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. I feel it right now. And you say, well, how long has the Holy Spirit been around? He's been around since creation. He's been around forever because he's God. He's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He's been in existence before existence even exists. Over in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 2, we have a validation that he's been around forever, every day. The earth was completely empty, and there was nothing on the earth. I want you to understand something. This ain't just talking about the earth. This is talking about one of us. Any one of us who don't have the Lord in our life, you just don't realize you completely empty. You bored of anything. You think you live it. Baby, you ain't live till you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You think you, you think they they don't make none drug, no alcohol, no marijuana can get you high on Jesus. And when you get high on Jesus, you don't have hangover. Oh, God is coming to the ocean and God's spirit moved over the water. When the spirit of the Lord get to moving, things get to happen. When the spirit of the Lord get to moving, people get delivered. When the spirit of the Lord is moving, people get healed. When the spirit of the Lord is moving, impossible will come possible. Oh, I thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I thank God. Over in Matthew chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, I'm going to show you where the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit was all in one place at one time. They had gathered together. Jesus Christ had just got baptized. And the Bible says when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately out of the water. That's why when we baptize people, we take you all the way under the water. Because when Jesus got baptized, John the Baptist took him all the way under the water and he came straight up. And so we're following the model that Jesus Christ did. That's why I take you down in the water and I bring you all the way back up. And when you go down, that means the old life is being buried. And when you come up, that means you should be a brand new person. In Christ Jesus. Thank you, God. Behold, the heavens were opening to him, and he saw the Spirit of God. Yeah, the Spirit of God came when he saw Jesus walking in obedience to the Father. The Spirit of the Lord came. He said he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and a lighting. A lighting upon him. And what happened when you do what God wants you to do? And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son. That's the father talking right now. And whom I'm well pleased. What is the Lord saying about you right now? When God looked down from heaven and he looked at you and he called your name, does he say, This is my beloved son or my beloved daughter, whom I'm well pleased? Is the Lord pleased with you today? Power of the Holy Ghost, power of the Holy Spirit, I feel it right now. You tell me, you up there talking about the Holy Spirit, well tell me why I need the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm glad you asked me why you need the Holy Spirit. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 14, it gives us an indication why we need the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It says, people do not have God's Spirit. Do not accept the things that come from the Spirit. In other words, you can be sitting in church right now, but if you ain't got the Holy Ghost, if you ain't got the Holy Spirit, nothing I'm saying make any sense to you. You sound like a man up there that lost his mind, but I can promise you, when I accepted Jesus, I got my mind. I had lost my mind when I didn't have Jesus. I got my mind back the day I accepted Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 
know, they, they, they think, watch this, they, they think, you know, they think these things are foolish. When I talk about forgiving people, I'm talking about love the enemy. I'm talking about pray for those that despitefully use you. You think I ain't got no sin because you believe that you're supposed to get back. But when you're full of the Holy Spirit, even though they hurt you, you still can let them go. Even though they hurt you, you still can forgive them. Even though they betrayed you, you still love them and you still treat them right. Why? Because you feel with the power of the Holy Spirit. Ah, oh, so really, you got to have the spirit of God for these things not to, uh, for these things not to be foolish to you. Yes, yes. You got to have the Holy Spirit to understand why I need to be in church. You got to have the Holy Spirit to understand that when they praise God, I need to be praising God. You got to have the Holy Spirit to understand why prayer is important. You got to have the Holy Spirit to understand that when God tell me to push that plate away, I got to go on a fan. You got to have the Holy Spirit to understand the things of God. Without the Holy Spirit, nothing I'm saying to you make any sense. That's why. One of the main reasons we need the Holy Spirit so that we can understand the things of God. We can understand that no matter what my friends do, they can't keep me away from the house of God. No matter how much my friends talk about church and you know, all that ain't necessary, I'm still coming to the house because I understand that on the day of judgment, I got to stand before Almighty God and I got to give an account for the way I have lived my life. But I don't know about you. I don't want to live all of my life and stand before the Lord and he tell me to pray for me because I know you not. I want to hear where my good and faithful servant, you've been faithful over a few things. Now I'm going to make you ruler over me. Well, that's what I want to hear. I don't know about you, but that's what I want to hear. And some people wonder, some people wonder uh, that when judgment day comes, then a decision is going to be made. Well, we're going to spend eternal life with God or without God. But God is so good. Some people wonder with all this evil going on, all this shooting going on, all this killing going on, if that was a God, why ain't God moving? Why ain't God stopping? Let me tell you why God ain't moved yet. The Spirit of the Lord is still at work. The Spirit of the Lord is still trying to bring people into the kingdom. Now every day that Jesus don't come back, there's another day that somebody else can get saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. There are some of you under the sound of my voice. You ain't accepted Jesus yet, but the day is your day. Day is your day. The day is your day to turn yourself in. You've been coming to church for a long time. You've been in attendance for a long time. You've been giving money for a long time. But what the Lord said, the Holy Ghost said, I want your soul today. I want your mind today. I want your heart today. I want your spirit today. I want everything. I want your whole body. I want your whole self today. I don't just want part of you. I want all of you. In order for me to work a miracle in your life, in order for my plan that I have for your life, before you were yet conceived in your mother's womb, you got to turn yourself in. You got to surrender yourself today. You got to say, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and use me for your glory. I can tell you now, when you turn yourself in, people are going to look at you funny. When you turn yourself in, you get full of the Holy Spirit. When you got power, people are going to think you done lost your mind. You can be a young person and you be praising God. They be talking about the tricks and the strategies of the devil and you be giving God praise. They be talking about, come on child, let's go to the party. You be saying, I'm going to my house and get down on my knees and I'm going home and pray. They going to look at you like you're crazy, but I'm telling you something. Someone might go to the party and don't make it back. Hallelujah. It might go, but it might not make it back. Don't you be following the crowd. You better follow Jesus. Most people, when they see crazy stuff going on, they run to it. But when you got the Holy Spirit, and you got the power of the Holy Spirit, you run in the other direction. You don't run to problems. You don't run to trouble. You get away from it. Hallelujah. Now, this is why Jesus in Christ has not returned yet. This is why. Because he's still allowing the Holy Spirit to operate. 
The Holy Spirit is trying to, trying to uh, uh, re re help you realize, I want you. I'm calling for you. I'm asking you to come and surrender your life to me. And so over in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 8 and 9, we come to learn that God don't look at things like we look at things. God looks at things totally different. We always so time sensitive. But with God, time is in his hand. With God, time ain't the same as what we look at. The Bible says, don't forget that one thing. This one thing. Dear friends, to the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like one day. And so we're talking about the Lord taking too long. And the land that the, the Bible says that if God don't even come in a day, that's like a thousand years to the Lord. And we don't understand that because we always in a hurry. I wish I would have invented the microwave. Because almost everybody, probably under the sound of my voice, got them in the house. Yes, amen. And I know most of the college don't know if they got it because you ain't got most kitchens, they know. In college, you ain't got it. You got a dorm, so you get hungry and you want to put something in there, but you don't want to wait long. <laughs> That would make the microwave so popular is that you don't want to wait long. Huh? You want it and you want it right now. And that's why some people are messed up in their life. Because they want something and they want it right now. They ain't patient. Let me tell you something, baby. There's something about putting food on the stove. There's something about slow cooking some beans and slow cooking some rice. It tastes better than the microwave, honey. Because it takes time to cook. It takes time to simmer. And you got to learn with the power of the Holy Spirit you become patient. Now this is, this is the crux of why he hasn't come. The Lord is not being slow in what he has promised. The way some people understand slowness. But God is being patient with you. He's being patient with me. And if we're in our right mind, we ought to thank God that the Holy Spirit ain't came, that Jesus ain't came back to us. But God is being patient with you. He doesn't want anyone to be lost. Lost means unsaved. He doesn't want anyone to be unsaved. He don't want anyone to be separated from him. You all know I was telling them this morning and we were studying the word of God about the beatitude. I was telling them this morning that my wife, uncle passed away and one of my friends I grew up with from childhood they laid him to rest on yesterday and I say that people we have a tendency to go to funerals crying but look, when they living and they ain't saved, we ought to be crying. When they out there in the world and they don't know Jesus, we ought to be crying. We ought to be crying, Lord, save them. Lord, I pray that they come to you before it's too late. Ain't no need in crying when they in the casket. We can cry because we miss them. But you got to understand something. That the determination where they're going to spend eternity has already been made. We better be crying while they're on this earth. Lord, save them. Lord, deliver them. Lord, set them free. He, he, he's patient because he wants what look at what he he wants everyone to change their ways and stop sinning. Sin separates us from God. And that's the one we don't want to be separated from. You might be sitting next to someone who you consider that you can count. But the advantage that God has. He doesn't die. The person you sit next to and you put all your, you know, trust in, and they, they can go to bed and not wake up. Not wake up. That's true. So true. But God, God yeah. no matter what comes, no matter what goes, he's right there. He's with you. When people with you, he's with you when people turn their backs on you. He's with us all the time. Now, there is going to come a day, the power of the Holy Spirit, there is going to come a day that the power of the Holy Spirit is at work right now. Go to the Word of God, found over in Matthew 25, 31. 33. This is why this is so important, so important that you understand 
This is why we need the Holy Spirit so we understand the things of God. Look at what the word says. The Son of Man will come again in divine greatness. That's talking about Jesus Christ's return when he comes back. And all his angels will come with him. He will sit as a king on his great and glorious throne. All the people of the world will be gathered before him. Then he will separate everyone into two groups. Oh, you all better, better grab this. He will separate everyone into two groups. It will be like a shepherd separating his sheep from his goats. Sheep represents those that are saved. Goats represents those that are unsaved. He will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left hand. Oh, hallelujah. And you better understand that you want to be on the right side. You better understand that you want him to put you on his right side because you want to be saved. And the reason why you want to be saved is found, uh, I give you some more scripture in Matthew 13, 41 through 43. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will find the people who have called sin and those who can do evil. Let me tell you something. There are people that don't understand that in this world in which we live, you either on an assignment from God or you on an assignment from the devil. And what are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about uh, are you encouraging people to come to church? Are you encouraging people to praise God? Are you encouraging people to serve God? What are you doing right now? I want you to understand. There are people that say, child, you don't need to go to church. You don't need to pay your tithe. You don't need to work in the church. No people in the church that have lost their mind. But I came to tell you that the word of God says that the angels of God are going to come and separate those individuals who have been encouraging people not to do what God has called them to do. And it says that the angel will take those people out of his kingdom. There are two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of God and there's the kingdom kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of light, and the kingdom of God. And I know right now that the Holy Spirit is telling me that most people don't want to hear that, but you can't come into this ministry and not receive the truth. I will not let you perish without knowing the truth. You might not accept Jesus, but you're going to know you need Jesus. You might not serve God, but you're going to know you need to serve the Lord. One thing I want to make sure there ain't no blood on my hand. I ain't gonna preach to just make you feel good. I wanna preach and get you saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that when the day of judgment comes and the angels separate, they will throw them into the place of fire. Those who have not accepted Jesus Christ. There, the people will be crying and grinding their teeth with pain. Yes, when that day comes, it's important that we understand there is no relief. Mm -hmm. None. Mm -hmm. The final decision has been made. But right now, you are in a powerful position. One decision to make can change your destination. From fire to heaven. Mm, amen. But it's your choice. Yeah. Then God and people. Look at what it says now. What I like about God is that he does not allow anything to catch us by surprise. He's telling us right now what to expect. Yeah. Based on our decision. You don't want to serve God and expect fire. If you want to serve God, this is what he said. Then the godly people will, will shine like the sun. They will be in the kingdom of their father. And you see the word father capitalized. That's talking about God the father. They ain't talking about your earthly father. That's talking about our heavenly father. And it says, you people who hear me, you better listen today. You better take heed to the word of God. You better understand that Satan is trying to keep you out of the house. He's trying to keep you out of prayer. He's trying to keep you out of Bible study. He has a good tendency to preoccupy you with everything but the things of God. Just think about what you're doing now. You're
You're chasing after things. We're leaving God out. It's all right to have things, but it's dangerous to have things without God. If I got anything, I want to make sure I got God. If I have nothing, I want to make sure I got God. If I'm married, I want to make sure I got God. If I'm single, I want to make sure I got God. If I got money, I want to make sure I got God. If I'm broke, I want to make sure I got God. In other words, I'm trying to tell you today, if you got God, you got everything you need. The claps are just claps of agreement. Because we have come to realize we thought we had something going on. We didn't have nothing to be out of God. I didn't understand what peace meant until I found God. I didn't understand how to get through storm until I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I didn't understand that I don't have to put my faith in man or put my faith in a woman. I have my faith in Jesus and I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit. I didn't understand how to go get through school, but the Holy Spirit is my teacher. He's my comforter and my God. I'm just trying to tell you, if you have not accepted Jesus, you are missing a good deal. You are missing a the power of the Holy Spirit operating in your life. So, and, and, and this, I'm going to give you some scriptures right quick that will help you understand that we worry about the wrong who going to see them. We should be Concerned about God. Seeing God. Because I've learned, I've been living long enough now and dealing with people long enough now that I don't care how you do it. Somebody is going to have something to say. If you dress nice, they're going to say, look at them, they think they something. If you don't dress nice, don't look at him looking like a bum. So I'm trying to please God. I'm trying to make sure that God is pleased with me. You might not like me, and you might not like nothing about what I do. But as long as God is pleased, as long as the Lord say, this is my beloved son, whom I'm well pleased, I'm all right. Because I done learned that even when I'm all by myself, I still got peace. When ain't nobody talking to me, I ain't losing my mind. I'm still all right because I got the Father, I got the Son, and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I, I want everybody to know that, to make sure that you know that we can't escape God's Spirit. Over in Psalm 139, I'm going to read a quick, I start at verse number one for me if you don't mind. I, I want to I want to show you something that David came to the conclusion. Because uh, you know that David was a man out of God's own heart. David was not a perfect man, but David was a man out of God's own heart. And David uh, wanted to make sure that we understood something about God. And David says, uh, uh, verse number one. The Lord, you have tested me. When, it, when, it, 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 when he says, the Lord, you have tested me, God has examined him thoroughly. So you know all about me. David said that the Lord knows everything about him. And I want you to know today that the Lord knows everything about you and I. He knows everything about us. It don't matter where you go. It don't matter how dark the room is. It don't matter if you're on the other side of the world. God is everywhere. Amen. Look at David. David gives us insight. David says, the Lord is so powerful. You know when I sit down and when I get up. You know my thoughts from far away. You know where I go and where I lay down. Let me repeat that. You know where I go and where I lay down. You know everything I do. Lord, you know what I want to say even before the words leave my mouth. You are all around me, in front of me, and behind me. I feel your hand on my shoulder. Amen. I'm amazed at what you know. 
It is too much for me to understand. Verse number seven. Your spirit is everywhere I go. I cannot escape your presence. That's a sobering, those are some sobering scriptures. Because people think that as long as daddy didn't see me do it, as long as mama didn't see me do it. When I was growing up, I did all kind of devilish things. As long as my mom, my, my dad and mom didn't see it, I thought I was all right. I didn't know God word. I didn't know that the Lord was taking note of everything that I was doing. I thought, because ain't nobody talk about it, I thought I had got away with it. I said, oh, I was sneaky this time. Ain't nobody catch me. But now I come to know God's word is everywhere. His spirit is everywhere. He knows everything I do. He, he even knows what I'm getting ready to say before I say it. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. Because there's some things we say out of our mouth. We need to keep our mouth shut. But if you ain't got the Holy Spirit, sometimes your own mouth can, can bring trouble on you. Sometimes your own mouth can get you killed. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. Because we need to know when to speak and we need to know when to shut up. We need to know when to go and we need to know when to stay. But you can't do it unless you got God's Spirit. Because the Word just told me that God's Spirit is everywhere. Everybody going over there to the north and the Spirit said go back to the south. Because there's trouble over there on the north side. Stay on the south side. But if I'm following everybody and not following the Spirit, it can cause me to lose my So, I want to go with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. telling me. Now, I'm going to give you some scriptures because y'all have been uh, giving me and other people too much credit. I can't convict nobody. Mm -hmm. So, if you get convicted, say that the Holy Spirit got me today. Not no Reverend Thomas, the Holy Spirit convicted me today. The uh, Holy Spirit was all on my toes today. Let me, let me give you another reason that the Spirit, Holy Spirit, is here. Found over in John chapter 16, verse 7. And we'll go down to verse 11. But I, but I tell you the truth. It is, your, it is to your advantage. Jesus is telling his disciples, I got to go away. This is the Amplified Bible. I got to go away. I got to go away. And they tell me, no, Jesus, stay. Jesus, we don't want you to leave. But Jesus say the plan that God got is bigger than who I am. I got to go away there so you can get the Holy Spirit. Amen. It says, it is your advantage that I go away. If I, if I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, the standby, the one you can count on. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Will not come to you, but if I go away, I send him, the Holy Spirit, to you and to be in close fellowship with him. He say, I got to go away that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he, when he come, he will, uh oh, this it, this it right here. When he come, not the preacher gonna convict you. When he come, not the teacher gonna convict you. When he come, we're just instrument. I'm just an instrument of God. I'm standing before you, but it's nothing but the Holy Spirit speaking to you. So when you feel guilty, don't get mad at me. Get mad at the Holy Ghost. If you feel like you're being convicted, it is the Holy Ghost doing what he came to do. Look at what he says, and he, and he, when he comes, he will convict the world about their guilt of sin and the need for a savior. That's how I got saved. I came to church. He convicted me of the way I was living. Not the preacher. God used the preacher to preach. But it was the Holy Spirit through him that convicted me, that made me get up out of my seat and come down that aisle and accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. And about righteousness and judgment. Yes, God. About sin and the true nature of it. Because they did not believe in me and my message. Amen. People come to church, people are online, they listen to the word of God all the time and they change. You, you, you know you don't understand that the only reason you come to church is because somebody told you you got to come. If you're here and you don't want to be here, 
then you know that you ain't full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit will draw you into the things of God. Yes. You're missing a critical person in your life. For you single people, you out here looking for a man or you looking for a woman, and you ain't got Jesus, look for him first. Find him first. You find him first and get full of the Holy Spirit, guess what? You'll choose the right person. You'll reject those individuals who the devil sent it to you to destroy your life, and you will accept the right person. There are so many people that are so, especially women, there are so many women whose lives are flipped upside down because they chose people based on what they look like, chose people based on what they sound like, chose people based on what they got going on, chose people because they look good and they smell good. You got to choose people because you got the Holy Ghost, and you got to have the same and you got to know that there are some people, they're on an assignment from the devil. And the devil came to steal and to kill and to destroy your life. But if you got the Holy Ghost, then you understand that Jesus came, that you might have life abundantly. Yes, yes. Holy Spirit came to show us about righteousness, personal integrity, and godly character. Because I'm going to my Father, He, and you will no longer see me. Because the Holy Ghost has come about the judgment, the certainty of it, because the ruler of this world, Satan, has been judged and condemned. Satan, it's over for him. And if you know something about people, misery is old saying that have some truth. Misery love coming. I promise you, if somebody drop out of school, I, whether it be high school, whether it be college, I promise you they're going to always try to persuade other people to do it. Child, you don't need to go to school. You don't need no education. We can make it out here without it. Whatever it is, I don't care how bad it is, let me tell you, they're going to always try to find somebody else to go along with them. Amen. Whether it's good or bad. Because people don't like doing nothing by themselves. My young people that's in college, have discernment. Don't be hanging around people who all they do is party. Been there, done that. You trying to study, talking about child, so they got to go on tonight. You might want to go to their cute party. You know, the devil just stepping the night. You know, you got that big test coming up. You talking about the, the, the alpha's going to be on the yard. You know, put your books down and ran out there on the yard because everybody else on the yard. You better learn how to do what you need to do. Yeah. You better be full of that Holy Spirit so that you can resist the temptation of this world. Yes, Amen. When you will be able to stand, if you got to stand all by yourself, if you got to be the only one in the library, if you got to be the only one in your room, if you got to be the only one doing what's right, stand. If you got the Holy Spirit, you got power. We need the Holy Spirit. I'm almost there. Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. Jesus Christ tells his disciples this. He showed them something. He said, but the Holy Spirit will come on you and give you what? Come on, I, 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 if, 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 if you can help me out just a little bit. He said, the Holy Spirit will come on you and give you what? Give you power, power. It's called dunamis power. Dunamis in the Greek, uh, dunamis power. That's where we get the word dynamite. It blows up. It has power. It can explode. And I'm telling you right now, if you let the Holy Ghost into your life, if you let the Holy Spirit into your life, you'll start experiencing dunamis power. You'll, uh, you'll have a better understanding of your schoolwork. You'll have a better un understanding of how to manipulate and how to go through your job life and your career life. Let me tell you about the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is powerful, y'all. The Holy Spirit can bless what nobody can turn. The Holy Spirit can open doors that nobody can close. The Holy Spirit can shut down that run up against you. Let me tell you something about the power of the Holy Spirit. Is anybody in the house experienced the power of the Holy Spirit? Well, give the Holy Spirit a shout out and just give him a hand wave. Thank y'all, Holy Ghost. He 
said, not only will you have power, but you will be my witnesses. You will tell people everywhere about me in Jerusalem and in the rest of Judea and in Samaria and the other part, in every part of the world. Let me tell you something. When you ain't got the Holy Spirit, you're scared to talk about the Lord. When you, got, when you ain't got the Holy Spirit, everybody can be around talking, and you're the only one that knows to know the Lord. And you, because they talk about the world stuff, you be scared to let people know you go to church. You be scared to let people know that you're in a Bible study. You be scared to let people know that you're in prayer. And that's because you ain't got the power of the Holy Spirit operating on the inside of you. When the Holy Spirit is operating on the inside, you don't care what people say. You don't care what people think. You don't care if people don't want you at the cookout or want you around them. I'm happy all by myself. If that's the way it got to be, so be it. You know, people get insulted. Though. You know, people get insulted when people don't invite them to stuff. I'm so happy. If they're going to be drinking and cussing and fussing and acting crazy, please don't send me no invitation. You ain't hurt my feelings. I'm glad not to be in that atmosphere. You ought to be thanking God. See, when you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't even know what to be thankful for. Something, when somebody don't invite you to a throwdown, that means that they see your character. They see something different in you. You shouldn't feel sad. You ought to praise God because your light is shining. That they understand that if you come to the party, you're going to kill it. They're scared that you might jump up on the top of the song and say, y'all need to stop this stuff and put your clothes back on. They don't want no spoiler coming to the party. They don't want nobody in the, in the corner while everybody else dancing. You praying. You ought to thank God. That you didn't get that kind of invitation. Because along with that invitation comes temptation. And I don't care who you are. We can go down. If you play with fire, you eventually will get burned. I don't see too many things. I don't see too many people get turned out who was good people, solid people, who never had no drugs, no alcohol problem, but they kind of hanging around the wrong people and the next thing you know, they strung out worse than the people that, that was doing it before them. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't be filled with wine. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. John 6 and 33. Let me get on through this. John 6 and 33 says this. See, people think they got life without the Holy Spirit, but the scripture tells us you don't have life until you get the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. Amen. John 6, 63. And it reads, It is the Spirit that gives life. The body is of no value to that. The body, guess what? When, when, when the Lord, when, when God created Adam in the beginning, the Bible said God created Adam from the dust of the ground. Amen. He was created, but he didn't have no life. Amen. The body was there, but it didn't have no life. And the Bible says God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Breath of life. He breathed his spirit into him. And then man became a living soul. What is that teaching us? That's teaching us without God, you might be physically alive, but you ain't living. Because the spirit it's life. But the thing that I have told you are from the Spirit. It's the rest of it. And the Spirit, so they give life. Jesus said, when I talk about the Spirit of the living God, I'm giving you life. I want, I want to challenge every person under the sound of my voice. That no matter what you're going through, start depending more on the power of the Holy Spirit. Everything that the enemy tells you you can't do, 
You got to be able to say, I got the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of me, and I'm going to believe in God that I can do what seems to be impossible to man because of the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. It becomes possible to me. Let me tell you something about faith. Faith is something else. Faith can move mountains. Faith can make the impossible become possible. Faith in God and the power of the Holy Spirit can change our lives. Give you a few more verses, then I'm open up the doors of the church. Uh, let me tell you, let me show you where you need that power. Over in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, even though Jesus was 100% God and 100% man, he operated in his natural, in his, in his man state of form. He, he didn't use his divine, but he got his power from the same source we got to get our power from, the Holy Spirit. You know about Jesus from now, but God made him the Messiah by giving him the Holy Spirit and power. Jesus went around, went everywhere, doing good for people. Why? He was full of the Spirit. He healed those that were ruled by the devil, showing that God was with him. He, he did astonishing works and miracles and signs and wonders because he was filled with the Spirit of the Lord and power. I'm trying to tell you, if any one of us have accepted Jesus Christ, you're filled with the Spirit of the Lord and power. Use that power to do what's right in the sight of God. In Romans chapter 8, verse number 5, and I'm going to take you through some verses to let you know you got to make a decision about how you're going to live your life. For those who are living according to their flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh which gratify the body. It's going to amplify it. But those who are living according to the Spirit set their minds on the thing that the Spirit of the Spirit, His will and purpose. See, the difference between when we're living in our flesh, when we're living to satisfy ourselves, and we do what satisfies us. But when we walk in the Spirit, when we live in the Spirit of the living God, we do the things that satisfy Him. You can always tell when the Spirit is operating or not operating. If you can't deny yourself of things that is against God, then the Holy Spirit ain't operating. Because when the Holy Spirit operates, it gets us in order in line with God. But when you're able to do your thing without the Spirit convicting you and calling you to do what's right, then the Spirit ain't operating. Because the Spirit of the Lord is going to always lead us to do what pleases God. Now that the mind of the flesh, now look at this, this is important. Now the mind of the flesh is death, both now and forever, because it pursues sin. Sin is disobedience to God. But the mind of the spirit is life and peace, the spiritual well-being that come from walking with God, both now and forever. See, you got to understand something. Whatever you decide to do, if it's satisfying yourself, it ain't just affect your life now, it affects your life forever. I walk with God. It don't just affect the way I live now. It affects how my life will be forever. Amen. Yes. The mind of the flesh, when it is sinful, pursues its activity as hostile to God. It's against God. It does not submit itself to God, no, since it cannot. Why? And those who are in the flesh living a life that caters to sinful appetites and impulses cannot please God. The way I was living before I got saved, I was not pleasing God. Amen. I was doing my own thing. Amen. Whatever satisfied me, I was doing. Amen. I didn't care whether God was pleased or not. I was hollering, hollering. I was happy. I was satisfied. That's because I didn't have the knowledge and I didn't have the Holy Spirit. Now that my eyes are open, my wife ain't got to worry about me cheating on her. It ain't got nothing to do with her. I ain't cheating because the Lord would not have me to cheat. And there are women out here, they don't care nothing about you being mad. Well, you know, man, I don't care. As long as you can get to me at least once or twice a week. But when you got the Holy Ghost, you can't do that. That don't mean the temptation ain't there. Oh, it's there. 
Because if you've been living long enough, you know when somebody will like you. Amen. When they'll try to you. Amen. And that's right. But when you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost say, don't, don't even walk by that altar. Holy Ghost say, don't you look. But if you keep looking, you'll start wanting it. I got any witnesses in the house. I said, do I have any witnesses in the house? The devil don't tell nothing about what you trying to serve God. He's trying to find a way to make us not serve God. All right, go back to the scriptures. Let's go on and wrap this up. What verse am I on now? Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. And then after that, I got one more verse, and then I'm going to be finished for the day. But we're going to talk some more about the Holy Spirit, because we got to understand the power of the Holy Spirit, because the Lord wants to use us. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 2 says, according to the foreknowledge of God, that means that God knows everything ahead of time before it even happens. Yes, the, Father, uh, the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Holy of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ. So the, the Spirit of the Lord, that when I, I keep using myself, I can't use you, I just know my life. So when I, when I came to church unsaved, and the Word of God went forth, and the Holy Spirit convicted me, and I got up, uh, and came down the aisle and accepted Jesus. Guess what he did? Sanctification means being set apart. Sanctifying means being set apart for God to use you. Amen. How, when I came down the aisle, I didn't know I was going to be no pastor. Amen. I didn't know I would be preaching and teaching for this length of time to nobody. But when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit went to work on me. He started sanctifying me, cleaning me out and purging me. And when I first got saved, I didn't just, when I first got saved, I was like a lot of people now. I was still going to the club. But I kept going to Bible study. Kept going to the prayer system. Mm, yes, Even though I wasn't living like I supposed to. And that Holy Ghost kept watching me. You want to know the effects of the power of the Holy Spirit? Go outside and get you a shirt mm, and put mud on it. And get you some good detergent and put it in that washing machine. And make and I promise you, the way that, that shirt went in looking, it won't come out looking. Not if you got some good detergent. It'll clean it up. And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is good detergent. When the Holy Ghost finished with you, you won't look nothing like you looked before you got a hold to you. When the Holy Ghost finished with you, you'll be able to praise God and don't care who see you praising God. When the Holy Spirit finished with you, you'll be in a Walmart and all of a sudden the Spirit of the Lord hits you and you'll be in there praising and people think you done lost your mind. But I said, I can't help myself. I said, I won't go tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. It's like fire. Shut up in my bones. Fire, shut up in my bones like fire. Now look at this. Now it says not only be to Jesus Christ, but to be sprinkled with His blood. When I'm sprinkled with His blood, the only reason that give me a right to come before you and proclaim God's holy and divine word is that I've been sprinkled with the blood of Jesus. That means that my sin, the things I did before I accepted Him. He has washed that stuff away. He has covered it up with the blood of Jesus. And so when the Father looks at me, he don't see Andrew Thomas. He sees Jesus Christ's blood that covers Andrew Thomas. He said, may grace and peace, that special sense of spiritual well-being, be yours in increasing, increasing, be yours in increasing abundance as you walk closely with God. This is the last verse that I'm giving you for the day and I'm finished. John 14, John, I mean James chapter 4, verse 14. This is important because people think they got all this time. You don't know how much time you have. Listen to these words and listen carefully. Yet you do not know the least thing about what may happen in your life tomorrow. Mm, yeah. Don't nobody in here know what's going to happen in our lives tomorrow. 
Tonight could be it. You out here think you got this time. You out here think because you're young, you got a long time. Oh, I got time. You don't know that. Amen. Uh, read with this little actor, producer, a uh, little young guy, I forgot his name, he's like 20 years old. He's dead. He's writing, he was gifted, he was writing plays and, and, and t TV scripts, and he's dead. 28. Gone. What is secure in your life? Nothing. You are merely a vapor. Like a puff of smoke. A whisk of steam from a cooking pot that is visible for a little while. Then it's gone. That's it, man. Thank God. Make the right decision today. You ain't gonna miss nothing in this world when you give your life to Jesus. Come on. Nothing. If you want a good life, get Jesus. You want some power? Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Things are happening. You gotta stand on our feet. Those of you that are at home, I ask you to stand too. Or sometimes when we at home and we online watching, we get relaxed. You show God the same reverence if you can. I know mean, if you can. Show God the same reverence if you're able to stand. If you're not able, that's fine. Show God reverence. So when we stand in his presence, we say, God, I honor you. I respect you. I honor you. Show God reverence. I promise you, I don't care how young the youngest person here is in, in this place of worship online. If you keep living, you will eventually realize that you need God. Because you will encounter some situations in your life that you're going to come to realize that the only one can help you is God. Amen. The only one can help you is God. Father, we come now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this opportunity that we've learned about the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray now, God, and we thank you now that these words have found have fell on good ground. And we believe, oh God, that it's going to take root in the lives of people. We believe that they are going to produce fruit. They're going to begin to serve you because they're going to begin to operate by the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask you right now to move by your power, move by your spirit. There's someone under the sound of my voice, even in person as well as online, that has not made that critical decision in their life. They have not committed to you. They have not submitted to you. But I pray now that the Holy Spirit will keep working on them. Even if they don't do it now, that when they get in the cars and when they get ready to lay down and when they wake up, God, that the Holy Spirit keep working on them. Keep convicting them that he may draw them into accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And that they can then begin to live and operate under the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask you to move, God. Have your way now. Save somebody today. Set somebody free today. Deliver somebody today. But this is our service prayers. In the name of Jesus, then we pray. Believe and receive. And what we're going to do before we do that, we're going to open up the doors of church, the doors of opportunity. And if there be anyone under the sound of my voice who has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, how do I know if I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior? Is the power of the Holy Spirit working? Are you still doing what you want to do anytime you want to do it without any kind of conviction? Can you still continue to do what you want to do that you know that God is telling you not to do? And you still got peace that means you, that means you need to get saved. Because when you get saved, the Holy Spirit won't let you do and let us do anything we want to do. And even when the temptation comes, we'll be strong enough through the Spirit to resist those temptations. Do I have anybody that can give God an amen? He can do it, y'all. He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. Uh, so if you don't do it now, make sure you do it before the day is over. Remember James 4, 14. You don't know what tomorrow holds. 
Don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today. Because tomorrow, tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Amen. Okay, well, we're going to open up this opportunity now for the statement of faith. Y'all get a lot of hand praise for our little young ladies in the house. My age and sister Brian, you don't mind serving the Lord. Amen. Statement of faith. Upon the authority of your word. Upon the authority of your word. I have been given. I have been given. And it shall be given to me. It shall be given to me. Press down. Press down. Shake it together. Shake it together. And running over. And running over. I am a tither. I am a tither. I bring my tithes today. I bring my tithes today. Into your storehouse. Into your storehouse. Therefore, therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me. You pour out upon me. Such a blessing. Such a blessing. That there is not enough room. That there is not enough room. To receive it. To receive it. We receive jobs. We receive jobs. And better jobs. And better and jobs. Job. Raises. Raises. And bonuses. And bonuses. Sales. Sales. And commission. And commission. Benefits. Benefits. And settlements. And settlements. Estates. Estates. And inheritance. And inheritance. Interest. Interest. And income. And income. Rebates. Rebates. And returns. And returns. Checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises. Gifts and surprises. Bills paid off. Bills paid off. Debts demolished. Debts demolished. Royalties received. Royalties received. My whole family saved. My whole family saved. And walking with God. And walking with God. Perfect health. Perfect health. And abundance. And abundance. To walk in divine favor. To walk in divine favor. And blessing. And blessing. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going in. And I'm blessed going out. And I'm blessed going out. All that I do. All that I do. Will prosper. Will prosper. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I've been agreeing with that. Everything I do will prosper. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Everything. Not some things, but everything. You can give by text, you can text to give, you can give by cash app or online. Those are the different ways in which you can walk in obedience to the word of God. For, let me tell you again, for all, of my, for all of my young people in the house, if you start learning how to tie when you ain't got a lot, you can tie when you get a lot. So God, so God bless you with ten dollars. Give God a dollar. Amen. So when He bless you with a hundred, it'll be easy to give Him ten. Yeah. If you give Him ten, it'll be easy to give Him a hundred when He bless you with a thousand. Yeah. If you give Him a hundred when He bless you with a thousand, it'll be easy to give Him a thousand when He bless you with ten thousand. Ah, oh, if you give him a thousand when he bless you with ten thousand, it'd be easy to give him a hundred thousand when he bless you with a million. So if you start out, mm, when you ain't got much, you ain't gonna have a problem when you have much. Ah, oh, thank God. Hallelujah. I know I got some tithers in the house. I know I got some people that believe that God is our provider. Hallelujah. Amen. He can take you from bankruptcy to owning the bank. Uh, those that can't let us stand as we pray over the offering. Well, as we give thanks. We don't need to pray for the offering. It's already blessed. Because if you went to that basket, that means you're already blessed. That means you can't give what you have not received. Father, we want to thank you and we want to give you thanks for the blessing. For every one of us that was able to put anything in the basket, we want to thank you. We want to thank you that, that through all of this 
uh, uh, stuff, prices increase and everything, you still provide. We want to thank you that we come into the understanding that we don't need to be storing up nothing on this earth because we can't keep it anyway. And so we're going to do all we can to be thankful and serve you and as you provide for us, we're going to praise and glorify your name. Now God, we ask that you continue to shower your blessings down and we can continue to be a blessing to others. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Special events. We have Deacon S coming up. God, thank the Lord Jesus. Power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank God for the power. Our special announcement get excited once again our 2022 revival. Making disciples. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We believe in God. Anointed word will come. Amen. From on July 27th through 29th, 7 p.m. nightly. Our guest speaker is Reverend Joshua N. King Sr. Amen. Amen. You can join in person, Facebook Live, Instagram, or Zoom. The meeting ID is 881-6331-0583. And that passcode is 283-196. Or you can dial by phone. And this information can be found on our church website. Y'all get excited. Amen. Invite your family and friends. Amen. You will be getting an email, text message with the revival flyer. Please share it out. Amen. Amen. Let's get the word out. Um, this is from the MPBCM EM Foundation. Um, they're going to have a spaghetti dinner sale on July 31st, 2022 after the morning service. The meal will consist of spaghetti, sauce with meatballs or sauce with meat, corn on the cob, garlic bread, dessert, and soda. The oh, price man. will be $10. Oh, Amen. Amen. You can pay by cash, cash app, or Mount Pilgrim Fount, or cash. Pre-order sign-up sheets will be on the table in the back in the rear of the church until July the 24th. You got to the 24th to go ahead and sign up so they will know how to prepare the meals accordingly for $10, amen. You cannot beat that for this meal, amen. If you have any questions, you can see Evangelist Murphy or Sister Deborah Grady. Amen. And this is from the MPBC Empowering Ministries. We have a save the date. Our women's conference is coming up September the 9th through the 10th of 2022, amen. And our opening speaker is our very own First Lady. Y'all get excited amen. about the women's conference amen. that's coming up. It's hashtag beautifully rooted, disciplines of a godly woman. And we have some of our speakers in-house as well. Y'all come out and support the women's conference. This is from friends and family on 1021 and 1023. We're going to have a mortgage burning service. Amen? Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. This year, our friends and family event is a very special history in the making. Yep. We have a mission and a goal to completely pay off the mortgage by oh, yeah. uh, the 4th of November 2022. Oh, yeah. We're going to reach it. We're going to do it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. <laughs> We need 74 members to pay their $500 assessment. 74 members, amen? Unless you want to do it on your own, amen? Amen. We are believing and trusting in God that this will be done, as we said, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now is the time. We'll, we will be taking assessments from today going forward. Please complete an envelope today. We will track our progress in the sanctuary. Join us. Be a part of history and something great. We can do it. It just takes God, faith, trust, and you. Amen. Amen. Those are my announcements. Y'all be blessed. Amen. Amen. Be blessed. And I'm looking forward to that because not only, not only are we going to have the uh, 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 mortgage burning ceremony, we're going to do something. It's going to be in a historic time. We're going to have us a tent revival. I mean, we're going to have us a tent. We're going we're gonna to get a tent 
and go on the parking lot and we're going to celebrate God like it used to be back there in the Old Testament. We're going to be inside the building. We're going to praise God on the parking lot under the tent. Praising and glorifying God. It ain't going to be hot and it can be a little chilly, but we're going to praise God. Hallelujah. Then you can wear your, you can wear your, wear your running shoes and run outside if you want to. And, and God has blessed us with a nice size parking lot. We're going to praise and glorify God because we're going to reach our goal. We will. Not only will the church be debt free, but who else going to be debt free? We're going to be debt free. Amen. And if I'm thinking I'm praising God, God is already right now. Oh, my God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I feel the spirit of the living God. Right now, some of y'all can go on and make your donations, all making your donation towards your five hundred dollars because we get ready to give you some food and the money you gonna save on the grocery. You can go on and put it towards your assessment because we got buying for grocery and they got food in the back. Then when you leave, I told you every time you come, you will leave better than you came. You will leave with more than you came. Stand up on your feet if you're ready to go home. If you want to, you can stay sitting down and I get a benediction. And you can stay here with you. You can miss it. Just lock the door when you leave. Amen. Father, I want to take this time to say thank you. We thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. We want to thank you for Evangelist Murphy and her team who work so diligently to make sure that we have food on our tables. And so we pray your blessings upon the food that will be received, that we will use, that we will then take the additional funds that we have, God, and, and, and use wisdom. We ask you now in the name of Jesus that you cover us with the blood of Jesus, that no hurt on the day you come near us, no sickness, no disease or virus, give us safe travel back home. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with thee, henceforth and forevermore. And God, all of God's people said, what? Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand.